Alright guys, and welcome back to episode 18 of the Raid series. Now in this episode, we're going to do three money runs. I'm going to plan to do these all at night time, and it's going to be a little bit different to how I usually do money runs. I'm going to mix one of them up as a run that I wouldn't normally do. I'm going to go nighttime factory for one. I'm going to do an interchange run for one, and then I'll probably finish up with the shoreline run for one of the runs. Now, hopefully everything goes pretty smoothly. I am going to actually take in pretty much the exact same loadout as I did previously with the Mosin. The only addition is, I think it's here. I'm going to take this backpack. Now, I sold some of the items like the gunpowders and that to the flea market to uh, make a little bit of cash. We'll hold on to this mask for now, but we're going to do all these runs at night time. So the first one I want to do is factory night time. Uh, we're going to just get maybe half a dozen kills to a dozen kills. If there's a player in there, we're going to just lay low initially and see what happens. Um, but that's how I want to do it. So I want to go night time factory first. Then we get some guns, uh, just some any, any kind of stuff that it would make us good bit of money if it's just a couple hundred thousand rubles not going to take very long doing it it's going to get in through there nice and quick and then um move on from there to interchange which will be the next one we'll do so let's crack straight into it all right so now that took a couple of minutes to load in i'm hoping it's going to be either an empty raid or just the one other player um we're going to just listen out hide in corners and just if they if we hear players running around we'll know straight away most people don't go nighttime factory so it's a pretty safe place to do some farming and you can use your uh your scav to do the runs as well. So, what I want to do is get straight up on the rafters. And then just sit up there. Now, the main people that will go nighttime factory, if they're fully geared or they're farming scads for a certain thing, like leveling snipers, or to make some cash, or they're trying to drop off their quest item, which we located right in there. Scads will probably start spawning in waves and droves soon. It usually takes about a minute or two for them to start spawning. A bit weird that that flashbang went off. Really know what's going on with my ping spike and all over this shot. Давай, мочи! Now, scabs can pretty much see at night time no matter what, so. Off with your tolls. Yes. Down, Delta. That's bright. Oh, we've woken the the hornet's nest, I guess.
Jump down the bottom in front of us. Yeah, the aim is to get away from being up here. We're going to get down to the low ground and then have all the... The scavs stuck. Waving towards us. Now, just for give you an example of how dark this is, this is what it looks like, so. Thanks nothing to the scabs, though. And you don't have to loot any of this from, uh, from that spot. You could always loot it, chuck it in your backpack, run off and, and loot it somewhere else, so. Much easier to see. Rubbish. Holy shit. Is that a player? It was. Okay, so this door was open, so I'm guessing the player came in here to place down the gunpowders. That would be my guess. I don't know why that light wouldn't get blown out. Definitely screw up my chi, though. That gear, guys, gear might be all we need to get out of this. Do a quick reload. Toz. Oh, give us some meds. I don't have any meds. I did, thank God. Oh, yeah. Alright, so I'm, the way from here, I just pretty much want to get out. Get AP 6.3 as well. Got really lucky then. Probably two more bullets, I would have been dead. I thought I heard a flashbang at the start, and I was like, probably a player. I don't know any reason why a, a scav would ever shoot something.
Front open the door. Make sure you see I was talking about uh, earlier on, very early episode, examining magazines. Looks like the scabs can't breach his door, so it's a good start. Good for us at least. That armor is gone though. Fortunately, we might have to. Do it this way. It's like a player scouts came in here. Now we're trapped. Well, this is uh, going to a very bad spot for us. If we get out of this alive, we'll be very amazed. We've got half an hour. This could be a half hour effort. episode of us just sitting in a room trying to hold someone off. <laughs> if you hold the C and press the mouse wheel, you can actually change your height like that. You just get yourself high enough so your, your barrel's just over. You're not as exposed. I really want to live this raid. I want to live this. I want to break the curse of every every raid, first raid of the episode, getting 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 fucked on. He shot a scab then. Then the scab's against him. Hey, you might remember this room we uh, looted a vial from right there. That's a meds. It was a really shitty room to get stuck in. We started it now. He's fighting all the scabs. Good for us, because then... Probably use this to our advantage. Maybe extract that. Sometimes they, oh, one of the scav extracts is inside the office.
Ui. That'll learn us to run out of meds. Oh, ho, ho. We did get a nice MPX though. We can use that. Or we can sell it. All right. So first money run done. A bit of luck involved in that one. But we did get some, uh, we got the kill. We got a little bit of XP from it. And we will put that uh, the money made from that into uh, getting better gear. Or we might even just hold on to the MPX. It's really good for our lab run if we end up doing one of them. Now we could go to like, say for example, do a lab run as a money run. Issue I've got with that is um, a bit of like a flip of the coin if you're actually going to make profit from it. I really want to hold on to that MPX for now. Keep on with this, this loadout. Good with that stuff. We need to definitely top up their health. I'm going to use... Because, like, we can get this all the way down to nearly finished. We can sell it on the flea market. Sell it for, like... And one... Two. And so we can almost buy another one from that, or we can go get two car med kits. We need to sell, get the money from Ragman. Sell those items. Repair this one. Our prep is perfectly fine to repair for that one. I don't want to take that armor in for the trade. I want to take the more, have the more space. Got the ammo. Top up the ammo because we've got heaps of it. And we're going to now go interchange. Whilst we're in interchange, we're going to take this key. Because even though it's going to be a money run, I pretty much just want to go tech stores, kill scars if we see them, and then get this uh, database quest done as well. So I'm pretty sure that's all that's going to be there for Ragman. I guess that's only two quests for there anyway. So see how we go. We're going to interchange night time. Not really a night time, is there? Go this one. To be honest, it's not even nearly night time. It's just a straight daytime raid. I'm going to leave this moment like this. We go straight to our insurances and we're going to tank one of these ones. We even take that. For... All right. Money out. Do it. All right. So deploying into interchange. Like I said, it's still daytime. We're going to go straight into Oli. Go around the back side of it. Grab any loot we can from there. We're going to go straight into the tech stores from there. I'll go get the uh, quest objective. From there, we're going to go into the tech stores, loot there, and we're going to extract. Should have this whole raid done in no more than seven minutes. Maybe eight minutes. It's a little bit harder now that you don't run fast with... Um, or you used to run fast with pistols. I used to always run uh, run pistols when I did um, money runs. But it's all fine. fine. Where is like, like I'm lagging. Backpack on. Whenever they got backpacks, I have to loot them. All right, so water just to top up our hydration, keep leveling that metabolism. Going up here. Hopefully we're not getting shot in the back as we come up for anyone who's late spawning in. Oats there if we wanted them. Remember how I said you don't have to jump to get up that? Just go up that little lip there. And I have the left hand side through here. Checking for hoses and all the other good stuff that spawns in here. Checking that little shelf bit there. WD-100s. They don't sell for anything, but we do need one for a quest, so... But later on, Peacekeeper quest. The propane tank there. We'll just grab it for now. We'll grab that spark plug, too. Need that for a quest later on. It's brought up heaps of time, so I shouldn't have to really explain that one. The 
going to go around the back. These motors are selling for about 45, 50k at the moment. Light bulbs, we still need, I think, six more of them. Hideout. Trying to keep an eye on that stamina, always keeping it nice and topped up a little bit. Now, like, I could have brought a night vision along, but honestly, it would have been wasted in here. I don't know. Silly, those uh, spots that you can't loot. It's been a lot more prevalent in this patch than previous ones. Yeah. That could be the front of the store. Definitely sounds like the front of the store. Sounds like it's just got a pistol. Now, these air fi water filters are going for 100k at the moment. These shelves at the back here, car batteries. Car batteries in this one. I don't think that was at me, I think it was just... Oops, it just happened to come our way. Now... Shots are in this direction. This is where that PU site... be absolutely amazing. Now, if we were doing straight cash runs, we would have gone into... Uh, this Raz Rasmussen, I think it's called over there. The outside of that furniture store. The inside of the furniture store on the shelves just there. But the tech store right here at the bottom, and then at the top we've got another tech store. Those ones are your big money stores. You get graphics cards and good stuff like that. Doing like a bit of a double whammy here, trying to get the quest done at the same time. These rooms also can have items in well so pretty much everything's lootable so everything can make you money at the moment so it's almost worth picking up everything if you don't know what it's worth the only one that's probably a big letdown at the moment is um is dvds from computers they're pretty much worthless but everything else is worth something even fans are worth something I draw as you can sell for a little bit. There's a the only cash register here spawns right in the center of this desk right here in front of the laptop. Now this is the only logistics key room. We've got the manifest right here. Do to here. This back for like other stuff. I'm just gonna wait. Yeah. So they were shooting at the front of the store. Now scams here could be quite brutal. Usually what would happen is they'd shoot the scavs here and they'd run straight to the tech stores. Or they'd ignore the tech store. Someone just in the bottom here? Or coming out of the tech stores? I heard wood. Sounds so close. It could be just because I got the contacts on.
Let me get my stamina back up. We know there's a guy just there. He's, he's just gone to the tech stores. Or he's did the bottom of the, the staircase. But I think the staircase I would have heard a lot more crunchy glass noise. So, and hearing that wood before, it makes me feel like... I feel like a uh, tech store. A position's been given away now. Heard the guy prone, so I really, really did just want to focus on money for this run. Guy going prone scared me because it means like obviously he's not moving. So if he's got a good angle, he'll just hold it. That's what I would do with this. You know, he'll go to the tech store eventually. We'll just then when he gets there. Where did the guy go prone? He must have gone prone over there. Anyway, we're full of loot. We don't need to be greedy. Cheeky look to see if there's a scab down the end here. See anything here? So, it would have been nice to do those tech stores, but because it's still daytime, servers are a lot fuller and we're just going to run into a lot of troubles that way. No need, no requirement. Okay. No requirement to really overcommit to that. The user is covered, a cover from the glass way there, the truck there, and then. We're about to make a run into the ditch. If we see some scabs along this edge bit, that's good for us. We do need to get a couple more scab kills. I think we'll probably need about six or seven more. So we're not going to get it this run. So far with the loot items that we looted. We did get the quest item as well. So we're probably sitting on about 200,000 rubles to 300,000 rubles. That air filter plus the, the hose is probably about 140k. The um the, the the battery sorry the the motor is about 45k 50k it adds up so you're looking at you know minimum 200k if we survive plus the shotguns and all that it's probably more like 350k which at the moment isn't really a lot of money but that's probably two full loadouts for us um, and we're getting a quest done if we can survive it too so.
I can, I always like to try and get a cheeky quest done at the same time. On the uh, next raid, when we go into Shoreline, see how long this episode's been going for at that point. But, um, I want to go Shoreline next. We might do a signal quest. I see that's about around the tech store spot too, where that noise is coming from then. It is only a guy with only a pistol, so probably could have taken him on. Even guys with a pistol are a threat. The guy with an AK. Now, if you've been paying lots of attention to like the maps and the loot videos and that, there are a lot of caches, caches up ahead. I honestly can't remember where they all are. They're all through this area. Um, and you can loot them all on the way out. One of the changes that um, Battlestar Games talked about in the most recent um, dev blog was thinking about making not all the caches, caches to be there every single raid. Like, you know, like say there's 20 different in the map, maybe only 10 of them will spawn in the raid. Just to make it a little bit less uh, farmable. Still pretty cool that you can go up and loot them. There's actually a fair few in this spot here. There's one between the two aisles here. There's one. Someone's already looted this one. They're, they're actually really good. And don't blame people for farming them. A sure one run for the next the next map. Next run. Um will be that. Charge in the shoreline, loot all the uh, caches, maybe get a quest or two done on the side. And uh, yeah, nothing but grinning. Now I never have really too much of an issue with extra cameras on this map, but it doesn't mean that there aren't any. Be always careful. Look in every direction. Never stand still. You can do that little up and down crouch thing as well. Standing still will get you killed in this game. <laughs> Pretty much every time. So what the plan is from here, I'm going to quickly just dump everything into the uh, inventory. And then I'm going to jump into a shoreline raid. And we'll start looking for the money on shoreline. So something I want to point out here is the money runs that I'm doing in this is kind of to show you examples of how you can make some money just to avoid the combat and get out of raids. There are direct money runs. Like if you were just going to sprint straight for the most expensive items of each map, grab those items and try and get out. Some people don't even try to get out. They use like, they just either disconnect, blow themselves up with an aid or just suicide. It's totally up to you how you want to make money, but it's definitely important to find ways to make money in Escape from Tarkov. If you are learning the game, and you're trying to go in geared every time, you're going to go broke. Uh, you can also supplement your raids with every time the scavenger is off cooldown, you can either just go into a factory run and go pretty much straight to the extract. If you want to take the risk, you can try and fight stuff. Or you can actually go into the interchange and use your scaver, scav in the interchange run uh, to try and get some loot, then run out that way. So th there's options out there, but it's so important to try and get yourself a money run because if you don't, um, you're going to go broke until you learn how to play the game at least. Or at least learn how to survive more often and, and get, get through raids more consistently. So what you would have just seen in really quick time is I sold a heap of stuff. I rearranged some stuff. Uh, I got myself an AKMN for um, the Punisher first quest, which is kill scabs on shoreline with an AKM, uh, AKM series weapon. And, um, and yeah, so... I just, I want to try and multitask whilst they're doing a loot run. If we do kill a scav, we're going to get something of value for us, uh, quest-wise. Now, we don't have any meds on us. I definitely want to go in with some meds. Oh, we've got therapist level 3 by the looks of it, so. I'm going to go in with a couple of car med kits, or a car med kit. Now, I'm going to pretty much hug the uh, main scav areas. 
and then that will be it check some of the uh, quest uh, sorry the um the spots for caches caches and then that'll be it we're gonna this could be a, a very long run but we definitely just want to try and make our money's worth we're also going to go night time now that it is now night time let's crack into the raid all right we just waited a shitload to get into that raid it was actually 12 minutes so um that was just an excessive amount of time but it's all right we'll get into this raid it's definitely night time now and uh hopefully we can get some good loot all right so we are we're on the swamp side which is perfectly fine it's actually not too bad um there's a really, really good house in the swamp. I'm going to show you exactly where it is and then pretty much show you what I would do to just make some money on this map with nearly zero risk. Um, you take more risk if you want, but I think because we're where we, from where we've spawned, it actually uh, make some good money without having to worry about too much. People won't really go where we're going unless they're doing a quest. So. I'm gonna go to this greenhouse in it's the further house over that side that you can see. Um, it has just really good uh, loot spawns for the more. Oh, I don't know the word for it. Like, harder to find barter items. The car batteries and hoses and gunpowders and all those ones that are a little bit more rarer. They're the ones that will spawn in there, so. on the outside of this. The debate about the cash cache is actually quite massive. Funny. Right, it's worthless, by the way. Oh, it matches, really. Always be looting jackets now. Gonna need breakfast for quests. Uh, this table over here, you can find loot on that on that right there. This bed in here, the hose, the, the money, shelving in here. Let's get the measuring tape. Wires. That's actually something we could have done in factory. There's a quest where you gotta get a toolkit, two toolkits down in factory. We could have done it during that nighttime raid. What I'm going to do, because obviously this is a nighttime raid, and for hard of you guys to see what's going on, I'll have like a little mini map, little, I guess, line showing you where I'm going, where the next spot is that I'm looting. That way, if you're actually going to follow it, you can, you know, have an idea. Or at least you can learn kind of where the path thing is to get to some of these loot pawns. Got another cache cache over here. Pretty much just gonna grab everything first, and then later on I'll worry about if I want to uh, flip it or not. So. It's hard to actually see the swamp. It looks like a nine time, so I'm not gonna do that here. Another one just inside here. Now, there are some cheeky drop downs that we could do in resort, um, particularly if no one's there at night time. I think it will be pretty busy there, so I don't want to risk it. Sacral tea. Got a pack of nails. They're worth a little bit. Not as much as they used to be. Um, the sacral tea actually might be worth something as well. Where'd it go? There's a. There's the Wilston. The Wilston uh, construction thing from the, from the hideout. That's needs its sacral tea, so. It probably does have a small value. It wouldn't be very much, though. Look back in here, there's another cache. Got the water. Creep over there. Ah, 
I haven't heard any shots yet, so we could take this advantage to go check out um, a couple of the scab spawns. Now there are, and there's like another casual patch just over this side in the swamp over there, but I'm actually going to go shoot up the bus depot and maybe go power station and across that way. I do want to try and get some scabs while we're in here. Be an eye out for those players. So we're going to move up to the resort, on the resort. We don't actually have to go to the resort. Just to the right of the resort, there's the bus depot. We're going to shoot the, the uh, scabs at the bus depot, head down to the power station. Now I know it's a bit of a money run, but it's always good to try and get some of your quests done at the same time. And getting the Punisher quests done is really important if you want to get to your Epsilon container. This is a 2.4 secure container instead of a 2x2. Two two. So it's really good for, for that side of things. Try not to stick around this road too long, maybe 15 minutes. We are just trying to mostly make money. What I could do if I really want to is actually go to the roof of the resort. So go straight in onto the roof, get the signal part done. Shit, we're right here. Very tempting. Is there going to be players though? We're going to be at the resort in this map. So I could shoot the scabs that are down here from the resort. Alright, that's what we're going to do. Inside, straight up to the roof. Go down to the signal thing. Shoot the scabs down the bottom. Come back down. And then we're going to go straight down the power station. Shoot the scabs down there. Loot anything that we can. And then we're out of here. It's a solid plan. And I'm dead. Just opened the uh, the weapon cabinets in 218. It's the red key card room. We just picked up a gun. I think it's a hatchling. Picked up a gun, like a shotgun. It came with the, uh, the shell, so. I didn't do his looting. Should hear a duffel bag and a med bag now. Really depends on the key. Duffel bag? Oh, that could be the med bag. We're in no rush. You guys going anywhere? Loves lollies, so there. Yeah, she was on the other side, but anyway, we're going onto the roof. So, signal part one requires you to go to this little radar tower up ahead. That door was open, it's not. Oh, that's the first part done. And the second part is uh, down at that radar dish down the distance. Now, I'm going to save a little bit of stamina, shoot the scabs down at the uh, bus depot, and then 
We'll go from there. There's someone down there. I can hear him. They're below us, I mean. We don't need to be here. We're here for loot. To be honest, we've already got a fair share of loot. We don't need to be greedy on these, on these loot runs. I can't see the scabs. Normally he's just out in the open on the right hand side. Oh well, we'll just keep moving then. A new objective is given by the power station shoot the scouts that we see from range. We're not actually gonna go in there. And then go down to the radar tower. Got a few of those scat uh, those motion shots we heard earlier might have been people shooting scabs. Look at one guy on the roof. He's always easy to get it, get it started, so. He's unlootable though. Well, we're actually looking for the scabs that patrol down the bottom. Here he is. For a key. Okay. It's usually about three scabs down here, so one at the top, two down the bottom. I'm just going to quickly check these jackets and this chair for a chip key. He spawns on that chair, and we're going to check these two jackets. I thought about it as I was like walking down. I was like, do I really want to go and have a shot at getting some keys? Storage room's probably not worth much. The Elionka, whatever it's called, about 30k. And we're moving on. We're not sticking around. People heard our shots. They want to hunt us down. We're more than capable if we stick around, so. Like, even though that was only three kills, and I think we need 12 for the quest, it just makes... That's two kills, sorry. Only 12 of the quests. It just makes it each time... If you could do that, like, a couple every now and then, it really helps with, uh... the overall progression of quests. Now, we get this signal quest done at the same time, it's, like, even more of a bonus. Pretty sure that SB13 round's a shrimp round. It's not really worth that much, but... I don't think we're going to fill up all our spots... on the way out, so... Might as well. Up here, there should be a scab or two.
There's all these little radar dishes. You want to walk between them. And that will be the quest complete for signal. Don't appear to be any scans here. Look as we go through. <coughs> Shot. I must have been on single fire. Well, these things happen. That was a player scav. He was camping there. Fucking weird though. Sitting there. Like, maybe he heard me on the outside and he was already inside. And he's just like, shit, where do I sit? I think I was on single fire. I might have stuffed that up then. But I clicked and then nothing else came after it. So anyway, I've made that mistake so many times now. It's just, it's just ridiculous. But hey, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, let's see. I shot five bullets. Here's what it is. Anyway, so that was the third money run. But we did make plenty of money to cover all the losses then. And let's, let's be honest, that scab still has to extract all that gear. He might leave some of it behind. He might stuff up. He might die. He might get some of it back from insurance anyway. So it's not a massive loss anyway. It does suck, but it's not a massive loss. We we got like th three or four runs in a row where we survived. It's amazing. So that was 40k. I'm actually kind of curious where this T sits. 20k for the T. And then the nails, 30k. So what's that? 70, 90k. We made 90k from, the you know, what could have been a lot more, but it is what it is. Anyway, guys. There's not really much more to show from here. Um, this episode's already been going quite long, but that's pretty much how we would do a money run if I was a little bit undergeared, didn't have keys, um, and I still want to get some other things done on the side. So we don't have the signal quest done yet until we survive and leave the shoreline raid. But we still did get most of that done, as well as uh, with Punisher. Uh, yeah, we got two of the 15. So not a massive like progression on that, but it's still stump something. So... Anyway, guys, thanks for watching another episode. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. I do stream on Twitch every day of the week. So go down the link below. Give me a follow there. Any talk or questions anytime. Feel free to hit me on my live stream or down in the comments below. And lastly, I'll see you next time. No singing in this one, but tonight or it's around the same time as this, on my second YouTube channel, we will be posting our first proper video talking about the whole Europe trip we're about to go on. So if you haven't checked it out, jump over to that channel, give it a sub. Like the video, watch the video. If you enjoy it, give us some feedback. Uh, we're really excited to share this journey with you guys and I hope you guys spend the time checking it out.